Hi, this is Jonas. Today I want to talk to you about self-checking test benches in VHDL. Why they're important, why you should always create one, and what self-checking test benches are. A self-checking test bench is a test bench that automatically tests the device on the test. It runs a bunch of tests on the device on the test and prints out in the end a test OK or test failed, indicating that your VHDL module is working or not. It is okay to rely on waveforms in the beginning when you start off developing a VSGL module. I do that too. But in the end, you should always have a self-checking test bench for each and every module. After a while, when you have forgotten all the nitty-gritty details about the module and you want to ensure that it's still working, it will be very hard for you to investigate the waveform and tell if it's working or not. And most VHDL modules are parts of uh, bigger designs. They have uh, sub-modules or they, are, they, they have, have at least interfacing modules. And if you make any changes to the interfacing modules or to the sub-modules, then you will also have to check that the, the other module is working. And the only way you can realistically do this with a lot of VHDL modules are, uh, is to have self-checking test benches for them. I have created an example project for this video with a self-checking test bench. Let's just jump right into that and see how that works. This is the device under test. I have created a, a VHDL module, which is a gray converter. It will take a binary encoded standard logic vector as an input, and it will output the gray encoded version of the number. This is the code that does the encoding. I won't go into that. Uh, but we can go and look at the test bench. So this is the self-checking test bench. It uh, has a uh, input sequence, which tests all the possible input values. Uh, I have more details about this in the blog post, so I won't go into the nitty-gritty details here. But in the end, it will print a, rep uh, a test OK uh, text, and it will call the VSGL 2008 finish. Uh, keyword to stop the test bench. Then I have another process which is responsible for checking the output from the device on the test. It will count the number of changed bits every time the device on the test outputs a number. And if the, the uh, number of changed bits is not w 1, because that is how gray code works, when counting between adjacent numbers, only one bit should change at the time. And if this happens, the assert statement statement will raise an assert with a severity level failure, and the test will stop, and the input process here will never reach this finish statement. So okay, now it's time to test the test bench, and I have loaded it here in model sim. What I'm going to do is press the run all button. It's important that to press the run all button and not just the run button because I want to run all, uh, as long as possible or until the finish statement is it. So, press the run all. There the test completed with the text test OK. And then we can know uh, for sure that this uh, device on the test, the gray code converter is working. But let's try to simulate an error then. Go to um, gray converter. I'm going to add uh, some error here, gray bit number three, I'm going to simulate a stuck at zero error. So this is not going to change. So I recompile here. Run, start, restart the test. And press the run all button. And now I get failure. Se uh, zero bit changes changed should have been one. And now I could uh, debug this further by going to the waveform and trying to understand what really happened. If you want to know exactly how I created this self-checking test bench, Go to the video description and click the link to get to the associated blog post. There I will explain exactly how I created the test bench and you can also copy the code and create it for yourself. Test benches are really important in VSGL. Expect to spend at least as much time writing test benches as you spend writing the production RTL code. And that is why I focus a lot, about, a lot on test benches in my upcoming VSGL FPGA course. Uh, if you want to know more about this course, where I am creating the uh, LED matrix controller using the Lattice iStick FPGA, then you can also go to the uh, associated blog post in the video description, 
go to the bottom of the blog post and register your name and email address in the form uh, and I will get back to you with information as soon as the course is getting ready.